it's a beautiful day. So what better way to spend it than climbing into my shed, closing the curtains and burrowing down into my little Euro crack rabbit hole. Yes, it's time for one of these. Thanks as always for your comments last week uh, and encouragement for this week when I have to approach something that's terrifying me, the Make Noise Maths module, which is hugely popular, but to me looks terrifyingly complicated. It looks like it's been ripped out of a alien cockpit with all of its kind of Martian hieroglyphics. The Maths module is a four channel envelope generator and low frequency oscillator. Channels one and four have the ability to control voltage change over time, whether that be by detecting and gradiating income voltage changes in real time or generating gradiated voltage ramps as one shots or indeed looping these ramps by hitting these loop buttons. Okay, we're all in. But unfortunately this week, I've also had to learn a painful lesson of Crack Club. Being a tidy boy doesn't pay. I returned to our module this week having unpatched everything I had done the previous week, which means I have to repeat last week's steps all over again, right back to where we were with an oscillator controlled by our VCA triggered by a MIDI keyboard with sound going to our output. So if you recall last week, uh, Sandy made a brilliant film with a virtual rack in VCV rig, I think it's called, it's linked below, you can get it for free. And basically was showing me the, and us the basic principles of making kind of a little mini synth. So I'm going to let him pick up this week uh, regarding employing an envelope generator to create an ADSR. So what I'm going to do is just hook up a couple more modules, uh, just so we can look at some of the other things that you might want to do with CV. So let's get an envelope generator, an ADSR, and we're going to take the gate messages that are sent from the same sequence. And we're going to take that into the gate input of our envelope generator here. And I'm just going to go jump into Ableton and slow this down or make these notes uh, slightly more distinct because it's coming through as one individual gate right now. There we are. So we're getting individual gates now. So if I take the output of our envelope generator and I plug that into either the exponential or the linear inputs of our VCA, now what we're going to get is, if I turn up the level, the envelope controlling whether or not the VCA is open or closed. Uh, I'm also going to just quickly throw in another utility module. Uh, one of the things that I'll be building, uh, which is a multiple. So I'm going to take the output from here and uh, this middle part here is a mixer just so I can get a left and a right channel, make it a little bit more interesting so let's just take that out and now we should have left and right channels if i turn up the level here now our gates are triggering the adsr and i can take have a little bit more musical control over the volume envelope so thanks all of you for your recommendations for YouTube tutorial videos for maths, particularly you, Martin, the Loopop one was very good. I also found another one linked below that was for me very useful. So if you recall, we're kind of constructing a mini synth within the modular system to really understand how synthesis works. And we last week did a VCA, and now this week I want to use an envelope generator to create something called ADSR. A tactical sustain release. ADSR envelope. The contour of an ADSR envelope is specified using four parameters. Attack time is the time taken for initial run up of level from nil to peak, beginning when the key is first pressed. Decay time is the time taken for the subsequent run down from the attack level to the designated sustain level. Sustain level is the level during the main sequence of the sound's duration, until the key is released. Release time is the time taken for the level to decay from the sustain level to zero after the key is released. Attack, decay, sustain, release for amplitude, so level. And this basically is going to shape the sound with volume, if you will, so it becomes more musical. So let's use our maths as an ADSR, or in this first configuration, an ASR. Let's unplug the VCA. Yep, there's our oscillator oscillating. Now this is the gate input from our MIDI module going into channel one of maths and then out into the VCA. Now these two knobs will create an envelope with the gate voltage, slowing the voltage going in and coming out to give a gradient, a ramp to the VCA. 
You can change the style of ramp, linear, curved, etc. with this knob, and by putting it into this output, you can attenuate the level of voltage with this knob. Now, by putting the gate input into this hole, you basically get maths to send its own oscillator through itself as a single shot. So all you're going to get is a little mini ramp regardless of how long you play the note. The note you play will trigger the oscillator and you get a one shot. This is a simple ADR envelope. Now, when you hit loop, this is where things become interesting because the gate input then listens to how long you want this loop to last and it loops at a rate determined by your voltage change controllers, your ups and your downs. Okay, well, that was remarkably easy. How about we take things a little bit further, spice stuff up by using another math channel to control some other voltage change, say, the speed at which we transition between pitches. So I'm taking the pitch control out of our voltage-controlled oscillator, the thing that makes the wave, and plugging that into channel four of math, then out of maths back into the pitch controller of the oscillator. Then by using the two ramp controllers, we can control the speed at which the note changes. Hey presto, portamento. Okay, last experiment. Let's repatch the pitch from the MIDI interface directly into the VCO and simply use channel four as an LFO, a low frequency oscillator to alter the shape control of the VCO. This is the control that changes the shape of the waveform it's producing. Hit loop to make maths into a voltage control oscillator and the ramp knobs and hey presto, bumpy sound. So this, I have to say, is yet another surprisingly massive hit of dopamine, uh, euphoria even. Uh, this modular thing, it's, it's so surprising. I, th I knew I was gonna enjoy it because I'm a, a massive nerd, but I'm also a creative. And what's really exciting about modular synthesis is it's a creative's tool. So it's not just about soldering irons and kind of uh, uh, voltage diagrams and stuff like that. It really is a tactile experience. Learning maths, you know, I watched the YouTube video I looked at the manual. Those were really difficult to comprehend. The minute I insert it into the rack and you've got this tactile sensation going on, this physical feeling of making the patches, you suddenly just get it. And I apologize to make noise for going on about them being difficult to understand because actually once you get them in, they're very kind of, I don't know, logical. But again, I think it's something to do with this 3D environment and the tactile experience of physically patching stuff in. So so totally excited, I'm hooked. This week I was hoping to start planning my modular rack. I was wondering if there are any protocols in that respect. And the only response so far seems to be a left to right signal path is the way to go. So kind of the reverse of guitar pedals, I guess. Anyway, I've started planning it out on a thing called Modular Grid, linked below, but with spoiler alerts, uh, it has all of the units that I've bought thus far. Okay, so back to Sandy with his VCV film where he takes it on a stage. So, all, you know, so far so musical. Uh, let's take another three letter acronym and drop in a voltage controlled filter. So if I go to fundamental and VCF, instead of taking the output straight from our VCO into the VCA, we'll take it into the VCF, take it out of the low pass. And now we have a nice filter. Now the nice thing with CV is that we can also um, control all sorts of other parameters other than pitch. So you'll see that many modules have several jack inputs with labels like frequency or resonance or drive. Um, and we have some controls that allow us to attenuate how much CV is controlling these different parameters. So just to make things interesting, let's drop in another three letter acronym, the LFO. And we'll just take a simple LFO. We'll take the sine wave output of that into the frequency input of our VCF. And you'll see that oscillating back and forth. It's not doing really much of anything at the moment until I turn up the frequency CV control. frequency oscillator sending control voltage to that parameter. Um, so now if I increase the frequency of this, I can control the, frequ the, the frequency that our filter is opening and closing at. Um, 
So things are starting to get a little bit more interesting. Indeed they are, Sandy. And because I'm a bit of a slag, I decided to go back to the shed for just one more maths lesson. In the second episode of Modular Mondays, we use the Erica Synths VCF, or Voltage Controlled Filter, to filter out and resonate the VCO. So let's plug the out of that into Erica, then out from Erica's VCF into the output, then get channel four of maths to control that as an LFO. Squelchy bounces, and then... Thanks as always for watching and for all of your contributions. Next week, I'm gonna be putting a sequencer into my rack so I can do away with that pesky MIDI keyboard. Now, I also have just one question for you. Why, when I put different modules in the rack and patch them in, does it seem to affect the character of the original oscillator, even if I'm not patching in any audio, I'm just patching in different CVs? Any ideas there would be greatly appreciated. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you like what I do, hit like, and if you need to be notified, ring that bell.